Hi, my name is Rebecca Ripe, and I'm really glad that you're joining me today. Today I'm going to be reading out of the book of James. I'm in chapter 2, and I'm going to be reading from verse 1 all the way down to verse 13. So um, please lend me an ear, and uh, it's kind of long, but I think that it tells a really important point. So I'll try to stay on point sometimes. I can't find my readers, so. Um, dear, my dear brothers and sisters, how can you claim to have faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ if you favor some people over others? For example, suppose someone comes into your meeting dressed in fancy clothes and expensive jewelry, and another comes in who is poor and dressed in dirty clothes. If you give the special attention, I'm sorry, if you give special attention and a good seat to the rich person, but you say to the poor person, you can stand over there or else sit on the floor. Well, doesn't this discrimination show that your judgment, your judgments are guided by evil motives? Listen to me, dear brothers and sisters, hasn't God chosen the poor in this world to be rich in faith? Aren't they the ones who will inherit the kingdom he promised to those who love him? But you dishonor the poor. Isn't it the rich who oppress you and drag you into court? Aren't they the ones who slander Jesus Christ, whose noble name you bear? Yes, indeed. It is good when you obey the royal law as founded in the scriptures. Love your neighbor as yourself. But if you favor some people over others, you are committing a sin. You are guilty of breaking the law. For the person who keeps all of the laws except one, except one is a guilty person, as a person who has broken all of God's laws. Let me read that again. For the person who keeps all of the laws except one is guilty, as, is as guilty as the person who has broken all of God's laws. For the same God who said, you must not commit adultery, also said, you must not murder. So if murder, so if you murder someone but do not commit adultery, you have still broken the law. So whatever you say or whatever you do, remember that you will be judged by the law that sets you free. There will be no mercy for those who have not shown mercy to others but if you have been merciful God will be merciful when he judges you you know this is like a warning against being prejudiced to people and there's a really important warning at the end the very end of it all and that is there will be no mercy for those who've shown no mercy and don't we all want to have mercy mercy is such an important thing to show other people it's like grace you give people room for error and mercy is when they've made that error you overlook it and you're kind to them or when people have been mistreated you are kind to them and you don't um, be part of that mistreating when you show mercy to someone it is like healing it's like a healing bomb to somebody who's in misery and and so when we show partiality to someone we are oppressing another person and so we're not giving them mercy we're not showing the kindness and mercy and not just kindness but showing our them as more important than ourselves thinking of them more than we're thinking of ourselves because when you're showing partiality usually there's some benefit you're getting out of it to show that person a uh, favor and and for a reason we show partiality for a reason is what i'm trying to say and, and when you favor one person over the other you're oppressing another person and that's not just uh 
oppression, but it's a lack of mercy to that person. When you're being impartial, you're putting both people as more important as yourself and showing equal amount of kindness and equal amount of mercy, giving both people, whether rich or poor, a better seat than yourself and being merciful and not making a judgment because there's a warning there on the day of judgment if we have not been merciful to other people, God will not show mercy to us. And how very important that is on the day of judgment. I want God's mercy. I want him to be merciful to me. I want him to uh, be kind to me and give me grace and know that I'm fallible. I'm a fallible person and I fall short of the mark all the time and that's really um, sin means that we miss the mark and grace is room for error and so when we miss the mark I want God's grace and I want his mercy as well that he's gonna pick me back up and set me on my feet and lead me in the right direction and not favor someone over me and, but to me, show me just as much mercy as the next person and that's how God is. He shows no partiality. You know, to him, not one man's a different from the other. We're all man to him. Women or men, we're all man to God. Everybody's man. And so he shows no partiality to anybody. Um, all of us, every single person has access to God by the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. God wants that none should perish. He doesn't want anybody to perish. He takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. He takes no pleasure in uh, having to discipline us even. He doesn't take pleasure in that. He does it because he loves us and he wants to lead us in the right direction. And sometimes God's discipline is harsh. But if he is being harsh, remember that uh, he will also show compassion. and that he's the God that gives and takes away. And when I, when I personally get frustrated with, frustrated with the Lord, um, why did you do it that way, Lord? You know, I get the whole, which we all do. We can all get our, our shaking our fist at the Lord and saying, why did you do it like that? And I'll, and I'll tell you what he's told me. And it, it's a very frustrating thing. That's when you really know it's coming from God because it, you know, God, does not make us always feel good. He can make us feel very uncomfortable and and very frustrated. I, and I know that it's definitely from the Lord because I'm very frustrated with what he just said. And so, um, you know, just not too long ago, I was like kind of, why, Lord? Why do we do it like that? I don't understand. And he said, who are you, O oh mortal man, to talk back to God? And boy, did he put me in my place. And I was very frustrated. But at the same time, it was very comforting. And the reason why is because I remember he's the one who knows the beginning and the end. He sees the whole picture. I don't. He sees all of it. And if he did it for a reason, then it was for a good reason. And I don't need to know why. I just need to know that he's good. He's a good God. And what he does is good and it's for my good and it may have not felt good but it was for my good and it may have been hard but I got through it was a but God in the whole thing that's all that matters he's a good God and there's a but God in there and my job is to be tender-hearted merciful kind loving as he is that's not always easy it's not easy to be kind to people who've done you wrong or have really come against you. It's not easy to forgive. It's not easy to do. And I would not say that I've arrived. I haven't. But I am working with the Lord. And I am uh, doing the best that I can right now. The, to the best of my ability, I'm working with the Lord to move forward and to 
obey the things he's calling me to do. So for me to be merciful and kind, whether I feel like it or not, is to follow Christ. That is walking in his footsteps. Because he forgave even when he was up on the cross and people were murdering him. He was still merciful. And our job is to not show favoritism. And there's a warning as to why not. To always be merciful and never to be excluding one person over another and making them feel hurt and left out, rejected and unimportant. But to be merciful to the poor, they're already going through a hard enough time. They're poor. Life is not easy. It's hard and we all know that. And if somebody's poor, they're struggling in ways that the rich man is not. And so we need to be merciful to that and kind-hearted and tender-hearted and loving and show equal amounts to both parties by being humble, which means that we think of others more than we think of ourselves. Not that we think less of ourselves, but that we think less of ourselves and more of other people, that our thoughts are on the good of others and not always on ourselves. The me, myself, and I, and I this and I that. I have a, a spiritual leader that he, he calls that the I-itis. <laughs> when you get I-itis, I-itis is when you're always saying me, myself, and I, I this and I that but rather, how can I help you? Here, take this seat and, and give both parties equal seats and not favor one over the other, but to be merciful to the poor and merciful to those who are struggling and kind-hearted and tender-hearted as God is to everybody and follow after Christ. There's a warning in being prejudiced. And that is, if we want, on the day of judgment, God to show us mercy, we need to show other people mercy and be thinking of everybody as equally more important than ourselves. And thinking of ourselves less. And of especially those who are going through hardship. Especially those they're already going through enough hardship. We don't need to add to it. And so I really like this scripture. I really like the whole message in it and the point in it. Um, I know what it feels like to have to be the poor person and be excluded. I know what that feels like. And I don't ever want to make somebody else feel like that. I want to make sure that I give no favoritism. I have also in the past been somebody who did favor other people and and did not consider how my actions were making another person feel. And God put me in my place. And he did it through this passage. And it really, I, he called me out and reminded me of how I felt when people did that to me. and that I was making somebody feel like that and boo ouch man lord thank you for calling me out and reminding me that that's not how I want to be I want to behave like that and I'm so grateful for God's word I'm so grateful for how he does call me out and put me in my place and like even just the other day when I was like why God why you know shake my fist at him and get upset over the way he d did things and and he wasn't going to give me not a tiny bit he said 
Who are you, O mortal man, to talk back to God? You're right. Who am I to talk back to the creator of all things? I don't know the beginning and the end. And I can get very frustrated with that answer, but at the same time, take great comfort in it. God is God. I can't fit him in the box. And he is greater than I am. And that thought is very comforting. He is all power. And what he does is good because he's good. It may not have felt good. And there may be some suffering in the matter and some heartache and pain. But if God is taking me through that, then obviously I need it. And that's okay. And, and the best part is that the Bible makes it very clear that we are in joint fellowship with Christ in our sufferings. In other words, if we're suffering, he is suffering with us and he gets it. He completely understands where we're at. So we really are not alone. And that's a beautiful thing to know that I'm not alone. And if he's taking me through it, he's going through it too. And that's okay. Which was kind of a mind blowing concept when he helped me put that together that, you know, God has deep emotions, deep. He feels deeply and, and what a beautiful thing to know that God is feeling my emotions with me and it's good because he's working something out. We really are not alone. And it's really important that we follow after him in the way that he is. And he tells us right here a warning. Don't show favoritism. If we want mercy, we need to be merciful. So with that, I hope that you're blessed. I hope that you got something out of that word. I love you all. I'll see you again next time. All right, bye-bye.